So Mary is God's daughter in love. <laughs> yeah. It's not in laws and outlaws. This woman, who would have been thrown on the trash heap of life by the legalistic crowd, becomes the first one to see Jesus come out of the tomb. And we're still talking about her 2,000 years later. And then I, I already quoted this in, in Revelation 19. I'm almost finishing up here. It says, let us rejoice and exalt him and give him glory because the wedding celebration of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Can you look at somebody and say, you look like a ready bride right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You look like a ready bride. Yes, yes, yes. That's who we want to be. When I return, will I find faith in the earth? That's what he said. Okay, now that's again, it could sound condemning maybe to somebody, but I'm, I'm really not saying it that way at all. I'm saying if we're not doing that, if we're not merging our day with the Holy Spirit, nobody suffers more than we do. And the people who are counting on us suffer because you're sowing a seed of wind and you're reaping a whirlwind. Bad decision, you get a big bad problem. Good decision, you get the blessing. Works both ways, right? Right? And then I love this one, John 20. We went to Sight and Sound a couple of years ago and we saw the, the show of Jesus. I don't know how many remember that, but the scene of Mary is just so amazing. The way they build her character for you to understand, you know, she had seven demons cast out of her. Some people think she had lived as a prostitute. And, uh, and that, you know, the, the fact that she got saved and she was the first one to see Jesus resurrected like that's amazing right because women did not have standing in that culture and never mind a sinful woman just like the woman at the well right why are you talking to me she looks at Jesus like you're a Jew I'm a woman like, what are we, why would you want to talk to me and it's like I uh I have water that you're going to want to drink <laughs> changes the life but this is a different Mary now this is Mary Magdalene and and she went to go touch him when she realizes it's him in the garden and he says no don't cling to me for I haven't yet ascended to my father. He's not only my father, Mary. He's not only my father and God, Mary. Now he's your father and your God. This is powerful stuff. Everybody's allowed in. Hallelujah. So Mary is God's daughter in love. <laughs> yeah. It's not in-laws and outlaws. This woman, who would have been thrown on the trash heap of life by the legalistic crowd, becomes the first one to see Jesus come out of the tomb. And we're still talking about her 2,000 years later. But what about you and me? Is he also my father and God too? Yeah. Yes. Do you see him that way? Yeah. Most of the time, hopefully, but then I would say that what we've learned is when, when some of the behavior is not going well, it's because you didn't fully realize that he was your father and your God. Because some of that trauma that you're still carrying that hasn't been healed yet. And then he says, now go to my brothers and tell them what I've told you, that I'm ascending to my father and your father. He even says it again, just to emphasize, in case you didn't hear me, Mary, he's your father too now. To my God and your God. Quickly, if you want to read about the resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, the whole chapter is all about this. And I'll put in a little aside that this is not the last time I'm going to talk about the resurrection. It's not a one Sunday a year thing. It's our hope. The resurrection is our hope. Now you can say, well, I thought dying and going to heaven was our hope, and it certainly is. It beats the alternative. <laughs> but we're not going to spend eternity on clouds playing harps. Okay? We're going to come back. We're going to return to this earth, is what it says, and we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And Paul spells it out in a lot of detail here that I don't have time to go into, but I'll just take a few verses from this chapter. Verse 14 says, If Christ has not been raised, all of our preaching has been for nothing, and your faith is useless. Boy, I'll tell you, Paul just got right up in your face, didn't he? He said, You're not even a Christian if you don't believe that Jesus literally rose from the dead. And there's whole denominations that don't believe that. Don't under I don't know how to get around this verse. If Christ is not alive, you're still lost in your sins. And your faith is a fantasy. You see why today's the biggest holiday on the whole calendar? It's the resurrection. But Christmas is awesome. The fact that he revealed himself, the advent of his presence was cool. 
But the resurrection is what, what broke the death cycle. That's what conquered death, coming out of the tomb. And then it says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. Oh, so nothing's too hard for God. Nothing. And then in 21, it says, since death came through a man, Adam, it's fitting that the resurrection of the dead has also come through a man, Christ. The body is sown when we die. Our body's put in the ground in decay, gravity, but will be raised in immortality. It's sown in humiliation, but will be raised in glorification. Sown in weakness, but will be raised in power. Thank you, Lord. I don't know. I just tell you, like, if, if all you're thinking is dying and going to heaven, you're missing this part. Like, that's just a, a staging area before we return with Christ for the final return, okay? That's another whole day's discussion. Two returns, one more return. I'm not going there today. We should live like, look, li just live like when he comes back, we're going to be with him, right? And you really, whatever, that's another day, like I said. The first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last man, Jesus, became a living spirit. Oh, I missed that other verse. I'm going to read it again. It's sown in weakness, but will be raised in power. If there's a physical body, there's also a spiritual body. The first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last man, Jesus, right? The last Adam was Jesus. He became a living spirit. The first man was from the dust of the earth. The second man, Yahweh, is from the realm of heaven. The first one made from dust has a race of people just like him who are also made from dust. The one sent from heaven has a race of heavenly people who are just like him. Which one do you want to be? Should be a pretty easy choice, right? Once we were carried in the likeness of the man of dust, but now we carry the likeness of the man of heaven. We are being transformed into the image of Christ with ever increasing glory. Or not your choice it doesn't just happen automatically he doesn't go where he's not welcome most of the time sometimes he will for when that last trumpet is sounded the devil come back to life we will be indestructible and we will be transformed that's a hope and a promise right there in hebrews it says the better resurrection for we will discard our mortal bodies and slip into a body that's imperishable what is mortal will now be exchanged for immortality 